term por art, or arte povera in Italian, refers to an artistic movement born in Italy in the 1960s. Many artists, including Giulio Paolini, Pino Pascali, Luciano Fabro, Giannis Cunellis, Mario Merz, and Pistoletto, joined this movement destined to become among the most influential of the 20th century. The name por art refers both to the humble materials used by so-called poor artists, such as rags, recycled objects, wood, earth, plastic, and so on, and above all to the movement's intention to oppose traditional art. The goal was to develop a language capable of reducing the artwork to its essentials, making it simple and more suitable for contemporary society. The Origins of Arte Povera the poor art movement officially began in 1967 with the inaugural exhibition at the La Bertesca Gallery in the city of Genoa, in northern Italy. Titled Poor Art in Space, the exhibition featured 12 artists, each presenting one artwork, all created that year. Alighiero Boetti with his Catasta, Luciano Fabro with Pavement, Giannis Cunellis with without title, a metal container filled with coal, Giulio Paolini with the space, made by eight white painted shapes forming the title, Pino Pascali with his wooden cubes covered with soil. The practitioners of Arte Povera drew inspiration from the poor theater of the Polish director, Jerzy Krotowski. Poor art shared with the poor theater fascination with simple and ordinary materials from the industrial world, gathered from both nature and factories. According to Germano Celant, an art historian and theorist of the movement, the term poor should be associated with the language used by these artists in their art. As the critic explained, they eliminate from their research anything that might resemble reflective and mimetic representation, or linguistic habits. It is not about reconstructing reality through images, but directly bringing reality into art, utilizing materials from various sources. Poor art operated within an international context that saw the flourishing of conceptual art, land art, minimalist art, and other expressive forms sharing theoretical intentions not dissimilar to those that animated the beginnings of the poor artists. For instance, with land art, Arte Povera shared the idea of developing artworks in natural settings. Giuseppe Pinone was one of the poor artists who emphasized this concept. Soon, Arte Povera established itself as a significant international artistic movement to the extent that it is now considered the most important Italian avant-garde of the second half of the 20th century to have strong global relevance, and the works of poor artists are now found in major museums worldwide. We can say that the primary merit of the poor artists was to broaden the possibilities of artistic practice by opening artworks to materials that had not been considered before, thus unlocking meanings that were previously unexpressed. Ultimately, Arte Povera needs to be looked at as a form of protest against art forms, which are perceived as being associated with capitalism, such as pop art. So in the latter case, you have serial works, art as a product, art as a consumer good, whereas poor art portrays art as a cultural act, but also as an ephemeral return to nature. The main figures of Arte Povera and their styles. Giulio Paolini's exploration focuses on language, the role of the artist, and expressive methods. He is the most conceptual among the poor artists, and the first to speak of the poverty of art. His practice extensively employs photography and quotations from past art. An example is his early masterpiece, Kid Looking at Lorenzo Lotto from 1967, a photographic reproduction of Lorenzo Lotto's work, Portrait of a Young Man, accompanied by a caption explaining the artist's attempt to recreate the point occupied by the author in 1505 in the contemporary viewer of the painting. 
Alighiero Boetti works with textile materials and is renowned particularly for his maps. These maps are specially embroidered by Asian weavers, mostly Afghan, where countries are identified by their flags. Boetti is also known for his paintings, consisting of colored letters that form readable phrases, each time in different directions. The maps served as Boetti's way of observing the world's changes, while wordplay was the artist's invitation to the observer to contemplate art and humanity. The objective of Michelangelo Pistoletto is instead the maximum engagement of the spectator. In his mirrors, continuously produced by the artist from the 1960s to the present, the spectator becomes the main protagonist of the artwork, along with the entire surrounding environment. Pistoletto is also the creator of one of the iconic works of the movement, Venus of Rags, a provocative installation where the reproduction of an ancient Venus stands before a mountain of rags, symbolizing the conflict between the beauty of art and the chaos of contemporary society. Pino Pascali, the most ironic of the poor artists, known for his Bristol worms, crafted surprising compositions resulting from the unusual use of common objects. Fundamental in Pino Pascali's work is also the exploration of space through large installations capable of occupying even vast areas, such as the approximately 32 square meters of the sea, possibly his most famous work reflecting on the conflict between nature and culture and how art perceives elements of nature. Yanis Kunellis, an artist of Greek origin, is the most objective of the poor artists, where the boundary between art and reality is more delicate to the extent that his work never has titles precisely because they are self-evident. One of his most celebrated works is his installation without title, in which in 1969 he brought 12 live horses to the Attico Gallery in Rome. The works of Mario Merz leverage the theme of growth and development, particularly poignant in the 1960s and 70s. His famous igloos, created with various techniques and materials, symbolize the interaction between humans and nature and the transformation of the latter by the former. The igloo, an archetype of habitation, is also a metaphor for the relationships between interior and exterior, as well as between the individual and the collective. Marisa Mertz, the only woman in the poor art and Mario Mertz's wife, was renowned for her woolen works and environments, installations that fully interacted with space by occupying all the rooms where they were exhibited. Giuseppe Pinone is the poor artist most connected to nature and is accustomed to intervening directly in the landscape with his works. However, his pieces also reproduce elements of nature, focusing particularly on the presence of growth. This is evident in his trees, where large tree trunks, marked and cut by human action, are replicated with various materials. Despite the human intervention, the artist preserves the essential structure of the tree, presenting it to the observer in its inherent simplicity. Luciano Fabro is remembered for his Italy series, in which the artist reproduced the silhouette of Italy's boot using different materials, always achieving peculiar effects. These works often carried satirical and ideological meanings, such as the Italy piece hanging upside down with the noose around its head. Giovanni Anselmo is the author of works that delve into the themes of energy and the invisible, attempting to convey these concepts through large installations of objects in relation to each other, involving encounters of different elements, balances, tensions. Emilio Prini, the most elusive and less prolific of the poor artists, but perhaps also the most integralist, engaged in actions or installations that continuously questioned their own legitimacy. He used means such as photography, sound, and texts to challenge the perception of the observer and their experiences in the realm of art. Pierpaolo Calzolari's works bring together elements from the natural world with those from the industrial world to make the two realms interact. 
His works often incorporate a dynamic of action and movement. Finally, Gilberto Zorio, a sculpture, addresses the theme of the transformation of matter by creating works in constant flux. Thanks for watching.